All right. Welcome back. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We also have a website. That's also the FF Dynasty dot com. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Give us a little thumbs up and uh, hit that little bell icon down in the uh, I think it's is it the left hand part of the I screen? It's up on the right top right. It's right next to the subscribe button. So that way, whenever we do post something, if you're subscribed, it gives you an automatic alert. A notification. So let's get into the uh, main event of our little show today. We're going to go Sony Michelle followed by Damian Williams. But this is going to be the Sony Michelle portion. <laughs> going to kind of do uh, a little value check, kind of looking into the future. Buy, sell, hold combo platter on Sony Michelle here and see what we think. Um, so obviously he started off the year on a terrible note with the uh arthroscopic knee surgery misses some of the preseason then misses uh game one comes in week two starts off a little slow 10 carries for 34 yards and a reception then week three 14 carries 50 yards a reception no tds in either one of those weeks gets things rolling week four at home versus the dolphins 24 for 112 and a touchdown um then 18 for 98 and a td and a reception week five versus the colts Week six at home versus Kansas City. Interesting, because that's the matchup this week. Uh, 24 for a buck of six and two touchdowns versus the Chiefs. Then week seven, off to another hot start. Has a big run at Chicago and then a, a big catch in Chicago before suffering that terrible-looking knee injury, and which looked like it shit could have been the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but then kind of bounces back week 12. Missed uh, week eight, week nine, um, week 10. Uh, they had that weird game against Tennessee, and then the Pats had a ga- uh, bye week, week 11. Then week 12 comes back strong um, against the Jets again, 21 for 133, two touchdowns, and then kind of had an up-and-down season for the rest of the season, week 16 being the next big highlight against Buffalo, uh, 18 for 116 and a touchdown. And then, of course, last week you saw what he did against the Chargers. Three scores and 100 yards before halftime. Right. Um, so... It gives Sony 209 attempts, 931 yards, averaged 4.5 a carry and six touchdowns with only seven receptions on the year. Currently ADP 37. Um, James White's not going anywhere. He's locked up until 2020. I guess my biggest question of this whole thing is outside of we'll get to the, you know, the, the second part of the question is the uncertainty of the Pats moving forward, which is the one that's always in the forefront of this question of, you know, maybe you don't want Sony Michelle because of you don't know what the Pats are. But my question is, is this guy, um, you know, maybe just like a souped up version of Jordan Howard and everybody loved to hate on Jordan Howard because he was this plotter and thousand yards and touchdown dependent and this and that. Well, I'm sure he had more catches than seven in, uh, in yeah. his first two years in the league. Um, it was in the 20s. And then you put, you know, the reason why is because James White's in, I'm not saying that Sony can't catch the ball. He doesn't have a great resume to support that he can. Um, but I do he think he hands. can catch the ball. You saw him catch it a couple of times. Like I mentioned, the Chicago game had a nice catch. He had a catch in this Chargers game. Um, but he doesn't have that floor where you can get the three catches for 30 yards, four catches for 20 yards, where it can kind of supplant that TD uh, oh. that you may or may not get. And then, you you know, Cohen was kind of uh, Howard's bane of his existence, kind of taking away things. Well, White's the same for the New England Patriots. And if you put those guys, Cohen and White, side by side, took away their pictures and their names, you couldn't tell that much of a difference. You know, White had a really good year, so you could probably cherry pick and say how this guy had the clearly had a little bit better year. One was RB8, other was RB12, Cohen was 12, White was RB8. Um, that's not really going to change. So are you guys like down with what's going on with Sony Michelle? Uh, kind of bringing that up. Do you agree that maybe he's a souped up version of Jordan Howard of if the touchdowns don't come and only has 90 yards, you know, it's still 9.6 in your, you know, in your fantasy lineup there. Right. And, and right now he's ADP 37. Before I hand the floor over to you last year at this time, Jordan Howard was 36 in ADP. Now he's currently 70. Mm-hmm. I like Sony Michelle. I think he's a good player. Maybe some of that burst and electricity was uh, 
downplayed by uh, Scope, followed by another bad knee injury that was nagging him. I think the long on the year is 34. So you didn't see any of the game-breaking speed that a lot of people were in love with from Georgia. Thought he was this electric kind of guy. Not saying that he isn't. Maybe he was hampered by that. But, I mean, I am I always liked Jordan Howard, so I, I wasn't one of those people. But it just seems like there could be a limited... He has to kind of get in the end zone because there isn't a huge floor a catching floor for Sony Michelle so are you guys down with Michelle and then add in you know what everyone else likes to say is nobody knows what the future of the Patriots are is with Tommy and you know how the and Belichick and how the rest of this thing is going to go um it's kind of unknown Tommy's 41 he could win this year and hang it up he could play till he's 46 who knows Mm -hmm. um so are you guys down with Michelle? You you not down with Michelle? Do you agree with my uh not saying that he's he's a better athlete than Jordan Howard is. I'm not saying he's Jordan Howard. I'm just saying if you put the stats kind of next to each other, there's a lot of similarity. So anybody out or in or indifferent, how do you, how's your feelings towards Sony Michelle moving forward? I mean, so there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to all that. Yeah. After uh, that, <laughs> I'm going to take a swig. First off, let's start with the ADP. 37 seems a bit high. Uh, there's definitely the fear of the, the no PPR floor, right? That's probably the biggest concern anyone could have. But, like, he's so sexy and cachet sounding that they don't people almost don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't be up so high in the ADP. Right. And Jordan Howard got murdered for this, and it doesn't seem like anybody's even really drawing a comparison that way. Well, it's more so just the Patriots moving forward. Sony has the appeal of being able to house it from anywhere on the field, even though we didn't really see that this year. Like you said, Long was 34. He had another run of 33, and then that was the only 30-yard-plus runs that he that he had all, all year long. And if you don't get the touchdown, there's some very down weeks looking at the, the box scores here. I think he averaged 11 points a game because there is some big down. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some threes and some fives and sixes, and then there's there's some 22s. When it's good, it's some, great. Right. And so I do think that he was hampered by a knee injury that reoccurred throughout the year, and he, I think it was pretty impressive that he was able to come back from the scope and be productive for the team and, and be that fill that LeGarrette Blunt type role. And if he was... You know, I think you put him on that team a few years ago where LeGarrette Blount scored all his touchdowns, he shows better. And I think a healthy Sony Michelle in an offense with Tom Brady might be worth that 37 ADP, but you don't know how long Tommy's going to go. It almost feels like this weekend is going to like determine what the future here. It feels like we're, we're seeing the past versus the present or the future with with Tommy versus Mahomes, and I'm curious to see how that game. I, I'm so excited to watch that game, and I think everybody is. And so, there's that cloud of the Patriots. There's the reality of the PPR floor. There's James White who isn't going anywhere. He signed through 2020. And if I'm in a startup, I'm probably looking elsewhere at the top of the fourth round than Sony Michelle. Was well, that, would you agree with that, Bico? Yeah. Putting my team together tomorrow, tonight, my fourth player or my late, my third player at the end of the third round. And and it's not about the player, Sony Michelle. Right. Right. It's, no, I love Sony. I think we all like the player. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's my it's about the situation. It's my team and, and right. I'm, I'm, when I select this player, especially a second year on a rookie contract on the from the first round. His situation didn't change. Talent him. and opportunity typically have he's, to go hand in hand. He's staying. He's going to be on the Patriots for a couple of years. And it is the thing that the thing about the Sony Michelle and the Patriots situation is it's the Patriots and that can it can be a James White game. And we didn't. Um, old Rex was hurt for a lot of the year. We didn't see a ton of Rex, but he could they, they could go three headed backfield at any at a, any drop of a hat. The thing I think is different a little bit from Jordan Devlin Howard. can t- vulture you for touchdowns. Devlin can get you <laughs> for a couple of touchdowns. The one thing about the Jordan Jordan Howard, if you hit him by average points per game, he's thirty two on in this list that I'm looking at here. Ranks thirty two. Ranks thirty two. Yeah, it's eleven point three points per game, like which is right around Sony's. Well, threshold. Sony Sony Michelle must be below that because he's not on my screen. We stop at thirty two, but you 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 can with the injuries. For Sony Michelle, he you can kind of 
erase some of that average. You you can you can almost look at Sony's game log and you can look at his year and pick out the healthy games. There right. was it there was the game at Tennessee where they just got well, that's blown what I said. out. It was that weird Tennessee that, game where he was came weird. back. That and was then, weird. Then but, the bye. But other than that, you can basically tell when Sony was healthy and when he wasn't. And that was that's the thing about it is, you know, when when and I we said this, I know I said this when the Patriots took Sony Michelle in the first round and everybody was giving him a hard time about it. Like, it's why wouldn't you want to so, take? Why wouldn't you want to take a little pressure off of Tommy uh, with a with a highly talented back? Sure. But, but to go back a step, like what about all the games from week twelve to to week sixteen? It's basically week twelve and then week sixteen. So there's a couple of games in between there where he's healthy, where he's not really doing anything either, where he's just not scoring the touchdowns, and he's not getting any catches. The, and that brings in, and that can happen, and that can happen a little bit more. And it's often. not a, it's not his problem. Like it's not because he's not any good. It's just because right. the situation that he's in, and they were doing different things. That one of those games was a James Devlin two rushing right. touchdowns for sure. And that's that that can happen, and that's part that's part of exactly what you were spelling out there. That happens to guys that don't catch passes. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with him, and he got five points. He might have had fifty of the hardest rushing yards all week long, and helped his team sure. convert six short short third down plays. You mm-hmm. know, it's you when you get a Patriots running back, you are inheriting game flow, and and basically the biggest. And week to week scheme. That's what I was about. That the biggest week to week scheme changes. Ba- what we just saw this week. This was the most incredible thing. the The Chargers defensive coordinator was the hottest thing in the world last week before Sunday because he stopped Lamar Jackson with seven defensive backs. They had four down linemen and no linebackers on the field. It was all safeties and corners, and they were tackling Lamar Jackson and Gus Edwards, and they just stymied him. And all of a sudden. That was the best thing ever, and football's changing. And then the Patriots and Bill Belichick's like, "Hold my beer, watch this. Y'all want to put y'all gonna come out here with seven defensive backs before the first before the halftime? Sony Michelle had three touchdowns and a hundred yards, like blew the Chargers defense out of the water. Now the, there's a and lot it was, to be. And it was a ton of James White. There's a lot to be said. It's and a ton of James White, but there, and there's a lot to be said about the Chargers travel schedule and 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 actually a, a, we, a big fan of the the rj bell podcast this year fez and rj fez made reminded us that not only did the pay the, the chargers just play the ravens they played them two weeks ago before that too so three out of the last four weeks they played the ravens in the hardest hitting defense in the league and now you got to come back to the east coast for a second straight week one o'clock tip one o'clock, you know, Patriots kickoff. coming off a bye. Patriots coming off a bye in two weeks, being double di- double digit favorites at home against the Jets and the Bills, and they won easily. So basically, the Patriots, what Fez and RJ were saying, was the Patriots the most rested team ever versus maybe the most beat up team ever. And the the spot was horrible for the Chargers, but yeah, the but fact that those, they have a better record and they're on the damn road was just yeah, needs to be. That's just the way it fixed, works. Well, you know, when your division, when your division, if you're that good, don't lose to the Chiefs. Well, they beat the Chiefs actually, tore my heart out that won the road. Yeah, um, that was horrible. But the um, that that's what I'm saying. Like that the the spot was there, and Bill Belichick stomped on, like put his put their throat, put his foot on the throat, boot in the neck, like just stomped them out. In the fourth quarter, they scored some points, but they, this everybody that was watching that game knew it was over in the second quarter. No questions asked. And that's that's just, but it was Bill Belichick saying, "Hey, this is what we're going to do." And Sony has, you know, thirty five fantasy points before halftime. Next week, we'll see. the 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 idea is that you want to say, "Okay, well, let's keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines, and plus have Sony Michelle run for another hundred yards before halftime." But what happens when the Chiefs get up? If the Chiefs are up ten to nothing, Sony's going to be watching from the sidelines. That's what I'm thinking. That then it turns into a real James White game. If if the Patriots are behind, Sony Michelle's out of the game. That that's your risk with Sony Michelle. So it 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 a late third, early fourth startup pick. I want to put somebody that is in my lineup more confidently every week. And there's Sony Michelle could be averaging twenty something points a game next week. I mean, next year. Maybe this Patriots are like, hey, that if he comes into the season fully healthy, this like Casey said, the dude had his knee scoped in training camp. I mean in, in the preseason. Like second week of the preseason, all of a sudden he's, they got you know medical instruments inside of his knee a week before he needs to be playing. All right, so are you buying him at thirty seven, selling him at thirty seven? What are you trying we to get for him? We answered that question right. I'm in selling the at thirty seven. Can't 
can't can't grab him at thirty seven in, in a startup scenario. But it, so like if you already have Sony, right? That that'd be the question. Like, are you trying to move Sony and coming off a three touchdown game? I would. Well, just coming off of a thirty seven startup ADP, regardless if it's last year, this year, whenever it is, this is what his ADP is currently. So that's kind of telling you what the value is, regardless of if he had a three touchdown game or not. So well, that was value. before that. that yeah. this, this ADP came out before this big. And that's what that's. Yes, I agree. I would be trying to turn Sony Michelle into something more stable than a Patriots running back. This is not a knock against Sony Michelle. Right. This so, is just trying to get out from under that situation. So what would be your ideal target for moving on from Sony Michelle if you're a Sony Michelle owner? Well, pardon me if you eye roll me, but I will go back to my Sony Michelle plus what makes me get Zeke. Like, give me the guy that's going to get the ball in his gut 25, 20, 25 times. And, and the Cowboys figured out it's really, really nice to throw him the ball. Like, you can't buy Saquon Barkley. There's no getting Saquon Barkley. Todd Gurley's basically un, unaffordable. Like, you got to give up a ton to get Todd Gurley. I don't know. So, C.J. Anderson can do the same job. Right. So, you know, like, I'm I'm, I'm going to see what Sony – Sony and what gets me Zeke. Sony, Sony and what gets me a Ty, a Tyreek Hill. Like, give me somebody that I can plug in my lineup every week and just feel good about it. Right. I think I'm agreed. I think that's what you're looking to move him. What I'd be looking to move him for. I think that's kind of what we all came down to. Like Aaron Jones is right behind him in the ADP. Would you move Tony Michelle for Aaron Jones? If I was in a startup, I would probably take Aaron Jones over Sony Michelle. I feel a little bit better about that. I I'm feel in the like same spot. I'm both same answer for both of those guys. Aaron Jones and what takes me to get higher than that? Darius guys. I haven't even said, seen Darius Geis play an NFL game yet. Doesn't matter. Darius Geis is ADP is 34, higher than Ooh, Sony Michelle. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. I'd probably keep Sony in that instance. I'd probably take Sony over Darius. I want Darius Geis. I did see the, the workouts, the latest workout video from Darius Geis. He posted himself on Twitter the other day just doing some, some, uh, uh, some what do you call that? The, the sideways stuff. It was, it was good looking. He said only like three months out of surgery or something. AJ like Green? That. Four months. Sony Michelle? No, I'm not going to a 30 something year old receiver. So no T. Y. Hilton? Rather hmm. not. Um uh, just rolling down the uh how about Philip Lindsay? These were higher than him on the list? These are these are lower. Yeah. Th well, they should be. I don't I don't Philip Lindsay? For Sony? Yeah. No way. Oh, no way. Why in the world would I go backwards? I'm trying well, to go this up. Is, this is that was a guy who had much more workhorsey like numbers. Like I take well, Corey Davis over Sony Michelle. He was healthy. Philip Lindsay was healthy. Sure. If I, if I could take Sony Michelle and turn him into still Corey doesn't Davis. explain what happened from week thirteen to week fifteen of Sony. And there's other games in there. What was week two and three? You know, there's there's Sony Michelle. Yeah, there's times yeah, two, when week two and three he was coming back from a knee scope. You said that yourself. I, I did, but I'm saying like there there's plenty of times where he was in there and and healthy enough to not you know garner what he what you think he should and how good he is and it's situational and, and what's going on with the Patriots. But Philip Lindsay didn't have any of that. Like he actually beat out a guy who they drafted. Sure he did. So no go on Philip Lindsay. No, I think I'm dropping just in name equity alone. I'm dropping down going from Sony to Philip Lindsay. I'm sticking with Sony and trying to work my way up. I'm not yeah. going to go backwards to Philip Lindsay. Sony's oh. got a ton of names. Saying equity. it might not be going backwards. It's not. Um, it you, is though. It just, you said Corey did. <laughs> You said Corey Davis? Yeah. I'll take Corey Davis. Because you're you're not losing any name cachet. You're not losing any name value because Corey Davis still's got a great name. Yeah, I, I got to stick with the running back. I'll take Sony over Corey Davis just because he is a running back. I say Corey Davis because at this point, I probably already have a couple of running backs on my team if we're doing a startup, and I'm probably looking to mend my lack of wide receivers, and Corey Davis is like the last of the – true number ones that I feel pretty decent about. Kenny Galladay's gone. and You think somebody will give you Dalvin Cook for Sony Michelle? I mean, Dalvin Cook's a couple... Uh, he's, he's up there. He's, he's a round up, there, up the but list. But this is before the 100 yards, three touchdowns in the first half. I think you might could get Dalvin Cook. I don't know why you'd make a lot. Like, you probably have to... It has to be something else in there, okay. I would think. What? Maybe. I'm sending Sony Michelle for Dalvin Cook today. I already tried that. Even, when? Even when Dalvin Cook wasn't playing. And... and the season after Sony Michelle was going for twenty, had twenty four carries and two touchdowns and one hundred and twenty five yards. I tried to trade Sony Michelle for Dalvin Cook. It did not work. Well, 
I do remember that. Now that you mention it, you were tell you were upset about it. I'm trying it again. It just because it didn't work for Casey doesn't mean it can't work for you. At sure, all. but I tried it in real life on a higher dollar valued league and no dice. One hundred twenty five dollars. One fifty. One fifty. I tried. It. That's what I'm doing. And if they say no, I'll send it back. All right. So Kenny Galladay. I'll take Kenny. I'm like same same reason I took Corey Davis. Staying with Sony. Staying with Sony. All right. Well, it sounds like you're in on Sony. Then you said you were out on Sony. It sounds like you're kind of in. Well, I didn't say I didn't say I was. So I didn't say Fournette. I was drafting AJ Green or Kenny Galladay at the end of the third round either. So you're trying to get Leonard Fournette. <sighs> I'm staying with Sony. I probably take Leonard. All right, last Maybe one. Leonard. Uh well that's think that's just too easy but uh carry on carry on carry on yeah, Come I on. think that's too easy for our not, group all right not let's... in this room buddy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mahomes Mahomes or or Ertz yeah I'll mm. take Mahomes both of them I would take both of them too I'll move I'll move up and get I've never said that about a quarterback before me neither but... feels it feels liberating <laughs> I feel like I just took my shirt off outside in the cold. <laughs> My, nip, a, my nipples just got hard. Did a polar bear plunge. All right, so the, there was a real a real question um, about a trade that we had from a Patreon member um, from uh, Darth Tater. <laughs> you can follow him on uh, the Twitter. Twitters. I think it's just at Darth Tater. Oh, he's, he's there's good, some, some good numbers follow. in there. Good follow. Sean Bosley. Sean Bosley. He hit us up on Patreon. Was was trying to get Sony Michelle. He was like, should I offer? I'm about to make the trade from get give up Mike Williams in one seven to get back Sony in two three, and we all like conversed about it. We thought that was a pretty decent idea, right? Sony grab him. Uh, he just had that three touchdown game, so it's he's pretty hot. The guy that's selling him was trying to capitalize on him. We we helped him acquire him, uh, and then he hit us back again. He's like, all right, well now I'm trying to turn him quickly again and 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 get something back for Sony. So he was like, I want to give up. Sony, Chris Godwin, and one three, and get back James Conner, T. Y. Hilton, and Robert Foster, and we were like, hold the hold the phone a little bit. Like I would, like he was like, I'm about to make this trade. Let me let me know what you think. And I was like, ah, sit on it. At least sit on it for the night. I think you're giving up too much, which we ultimately came to the conclusion of. All right. So one more time, what was the trade? So the the one where he's giving away Sony. Uh-huh. So Sony, uh, one three. And Chris Godwin, right? Right. To, and to getting get James Conner, T. Y. Hilton, and Robert Foster. And everyone was pretty much in agreements that that was too much, right? Especially with that one three thrown in there. And he said that Robert Foster might not even be a guy he was going to keep around based on cuts, right? So, so I mean, basically told him not to do it. I like T. Y. T. Y. is fine. A little older. Probably could be a wide receiver one next year. It's 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 fine, but I mean I'll I'll keep Sony Sony around and and Godwin emerging star and then the one three Connor I see a split kind of coming with him and Jalen Samuels and then um what was the uh, the one Robert three Foster. and one and and Robert Foster's just uh, eh I think I'll I'll keep I'll keep my Sony my Godwin and my one three for for those guys. Yeah, I think. That's, I think Sony, Chris Godwin, the one three. I think that package of three players should get you something that sounds a little more fun than James Conner, T.Y. Hilton, and Robert Foster. It's right. basically what I was we have thinking. no idea what Foster's going to do. Yeah, and, his, and to his credit, he was like, I might not even be able to keep Bryce, Robert Foster uh, for my cutdowns. Basically, he's trying to see trading Sony Godwin into one three for Connor and TY. Right. And it seems like you're getting Connor this big deal, but I'm I'm forecasting a little bit of a split, which we'll talk about on Patreon. Right. Well Godwin is a big name in Dynasty. The one three is a very valuable asset. Right. And Sony is a beast and James Connor's a beast and T. Y. Hilton's a beast. Like those I can see where he's thinking that's a good looking trade. But I was like I just think he could get closer to getting his trade done and Pull the one three out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think he needs to give away that much. You go down to a two. Something something like that. I just think that three person package is too valuable. Yeah, I agree. So we nixed that trade on the Patreon side of things. I don't know if he actually pulled the trigger or not. Could have. He certainly could have. 
but you got to do what's in your plums. Just wanted to hit you with a little bit of real life uh, trade talks of what was going on on Patreon and some Sony Michelle uh, value and and when to when we said it was okay to get the Sony Michelle and when we said it was okay not to give away the Sony Michelle. Right. Even though uh, this this that. segment we've been basically telling you to maybe try and trade Sony, but you got to get something pretty great in return. Sure. Right. Like the first one, when he gave away Mike Williams in the 1.7, like that's a pretty decent size package. But you got back to 2.3, so moving from 1.7 to 2.3, like you could it's have a very... half a round. It is a half a round, but you could have very easily blew the 1.7 pick this year, and 2.3 could have been decent. You, this, you, might, you got to pick good players no matter where you're out in your draft. And to go to get Sony Michelle, I don't. I felt like that was a good move. Yeah, I, I was a big Mike Williams proponent over here. I was I was fine with that trade to get Sony, and I uh, stand by that. But I and I'm I'm still down with him trying to move Sony. Right. But you got to get something greater in return. Yeah, and on the Mike Williams side of things, that's a that's a thirty round difference in DLF ADP for January. 30 spot difference. Yeah, thir- oh. sorry, thirty spot difference of Mike Williams right, and, right. and the the one seven to go to the two three and get Sony, I think that's well worth it. Yeah, and so we're talking about some things that have happened on Patreon and the back and forth. I mean, when we were answering this question with Sean, I said I could have my foot in my mouth next year when James Conner and T. Y. Hilton are averaging twenty points apiece. Like that's very possible. But the whole point was a Sony Michelle and a Chris Godwin, both of those, they're like folk too, heroes of Yeah, too hot. Hot, 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 hot names. Hot, yeah. So you put those two hot, hot names with one, three, and you because there is some, uh, there's some really good conversation coming up about James Conner and the situation in Pittsburgh over on the, on the neck on the Patreon show tonight. And then T. Y. Hilton is he's a little older, so that you're you're gambling taking on Conner and T. Y. Hilton. I don't think uh, I don't think you need to be getting back a gamble when you move sony and godwin mm-hmm. and a one three right it's the whole point of moving sony is to get back something that's not a gamble exactly. shouldn't be a whole lot of value drop in sony at least moving into this year and shouldn't be any value drop in godwin moving forward where there could be value drop in a little bit in ty for getting older and value drop in connor for potentially what could be going on in the backfield in pittsburgh well perfectly said by both of you guys all right well let's take another quick break We'll be back on the other side with some Damian Williams for your pleasure. Little D-dub. 